So for those of y'all that's not familiar with it, the Detroit Land Bank is um, a program that Detroit has that has a bunch of properties that they acquired that was abandoned and it was probably either put on a demolished list or they've just been abandoned for a really long time. And the point of the land bank is to help get the communities back in order. So they selling these houses dirt cheap. Most of the houses on land bank you can buy for a thousand dollars, but they need a lot of work. So I'm gonna take you inside this house just so you can see what a land bank house looks like. Now, this house has already had some work done. This has some, some demo done and a little bit of electric work and today we're putting up some doors on it but for the most part it's bare bones so i'm gonna take you inside the house so you can see what a land bank house looks like and kind of what you can get an idea of uh as far as expectations when you buy one so let's go all right so this is the outside of this house as you see it's got a lot of exterior work needed it looks like they have some kind of uh, siding up here but it got tore off so whoever buys this house whoever bought this house i should say has to reside it so that's something you got to keep in mind you can see more of the siding here. Usually they, they have the windows torn out or the windows have been broken and they got these plexiglass um, things covering up the window. So they've got plexiglass. It's not really that secure, but you know, it just keeps like people out that don't want to spend a lot of time trying to get in here. This is not going to keep a professional thief out, but it'll keep out like your common crack is. Sometimes. Like I said, this house has been torn down to the studs. You can see it's got these plexiglass uh, fake windows all over here. Like I said, they're not super effective, but it'll keep a regular crackhead out. It's not gonna keep a super crackhead out, but a regular crackhead, they might just get discouraged. You can barely tell what this is supposed to be or which rooms is which. Now, if you've been around construction, you probably know that this is probably like a kitchen because you see like the water lines. You can see they had all of the plaster or drywall. More than likely it was plaster because these houses are usually pretty old, torn out. And you can see where they ran the new wire already. You see some little uh, white things right there. Those are like with the old tube and knob or knob and tube wire. And I forget what it's called, but it's the old school electric that they don't use no more. So all of that was torn out. And all this new electric was uh, red. Um, over here. I'm pretty sure this is a bathroom just because I can see the water lines coming out in the sides of it. So this is probably where the new bathroom is going to be rebuilt. And I'm not sure what this room is or this room. They could be bare rooms, but I know for a fact this is probably a bathroom and that's probably the kitchen. So this might be also a bare room. And then I'm going to take you guys in the basement. And this isn't a big house. Most of these houses aren't that big, but let me just take you down there so you can see what's going on down there. This is the basement. As you can see, it looks like a dungeon down here, but that's the purpose of this video. So you guys can see, you know, just what you'll be getting into if you do decide to purchase one of these land bank houses. So um, it smells terrible down here. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm just used to it because I'm always around this type of shit. But it um, looks like right now they're doing some repairs to the plumbing. So it's a big hole in here. So once they repair this pipe, they'll probably go ahead and seal this up. But um you can also see they ran a new plumbing too. You can tell the plumbing is new in the house, by the way, if they got this PEX up and it looks like it's this new. Like you can tell this is new. It's like brand new plastic. So um, that's pretty much all there is to this. Oh, well, hold on. There's a room back here too. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe this is like a laundry area. But when you see these houses, they repurpose these rooms sometimes. So what this room is might not have been what it was before. So it's just something to keep in mind. You can kind of get creative with these houses because you're basically dealing with bare bones. So after looking at that house, you could probably assume that it cost quite a few dollars to get this thing back up and running. Um, I think if you're about to buy a land bank house, a lot of times people um, get excited by the low price of the $1,000 purchase price. But I think it would be fair to say that if you buy one of these houses, you should expect to spend anywhere between forty and sixty thousand dollars to bring it back up to code um it's, it's a lot of work if you're handy and you could do some work you can save a lot of money that way but you're still probably looking around twenty thirty thousand dollars in materials at least so it's just something to keep in mind um 
when you buy these houses, something else to keep in mind is that the city is really focused on making sure that people don't just buy these houses and keep them sitting because if they do that, the neighborhood is in the same situation as it was in the first place. So their whole goal is to make sure that the neighborhood is getting, you know, revitalized. So when you do buy these houses, they're only giving you six to nine months to fix these up. So if you buy this house for a thousand dollars and you sit on it for a year, the city will take it back. That's why a lot of people don't like to deal with land bank houses because they feel like if they bought it, it should be theirs. But at the same time, the whole purpose of this land bank whole program is so that the houses can get fixed up in a timely manner so the neighborhoods can get brought back up and uh, the Detroit residents can have more places to live. So it makes sense. They want you to just make sure that you're on the top of your shit. If you're buying this, you can't buy it just because you got a thousand dollars laying around. You want to make sure you got enough money to do the repairs as well. So that's something to consider when buying a land bank house is that you got additional funds on top of being able to buy the house so that you can get it repaired and up and running in six to nine months. And they do check on you to make sure that you're actually doing it. They'll send people out to make sure that the work is actually getting updated. And from what I understand, they're not really too hard on people if they see that you're actually making an effort to bring it back up. But, you know, if you just let it sit there and they don't see any improvements going on, they're definitely going to snatch it back from you. You'll lose your $1,000. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that if you're going to be spending fifty dollars to $60,000 to bring it up to code, all the houses aren't the same. So you want to make sure you're buying houses in good neighborhoods on the land bank in Detroit that have a good uh, retail value after you fixed it up. Because you don't want to buy a house for $1,000, put $50,000 in it, and then the house only sells for $30,000. doesn't make sense. You want to make sure you're buying a house that, you know, at least has like a retail value of over 100000 because you want to make some money after you do it. Because the other thing that you had to consider... They don't put the house completely in your name until after they came by and made sure that you did everything the way you were supposed to do it. So you don't technically completely own this house to sell it until you get all the renovations done. So you wanna make sure that if you're buying this to plan to flip, that you're able to do everything you need to do to get it done so you can get the title completely in your name. And then once you get the title in your name, you can do whatever you wanna do with the house. You can either rent it out, you can, uh, flip it if you want to but again that goes back to making sure that you buying in a neighborhood where the numbers make sense if the numbers don't make sense i wouldn't buy it just because it's a thousand dollars you got to make sure you buy in the house in the neighborhood that after you fix it up and you put your fifty sixty thousand dollars into it that it'll it'll be worth more than that and there's a lot of deals on there but every house on there is not a deal so that's just something to consider so i hope you'll find this video helpful if you like content like this please don't forget to smash the like button subscribe button and notification bell and, um, you know, we'll catch you on the next one.